So we're going to have a bit of an educational segment here on uh, Kiko News today because I know absolutely nothing, and I'm going on the record with this, about rare coins. Hopefully, hopefully Van Simmons will be able to help me out. He's a co-founder of a David Hall Rare Coins and a co-founder of Professional Coin Grading Service. Van, thank you so much for being with me today. You're welcome. So apparently there's a lot to learn. Where should we start uh, when we're talking about rare coins? Uh, that's a pretty big question. I mean, part of the interest, part of the things you need to focus on are what type of coins you want to buy, the condition, and how much you want to invest. Well, I guess my first question to you is, how did you get involved in, in this side of the business? I've pretty much been a junk collector my whole life, buying and selling just things. And so coins were the natural thing for me to go to because they were made out, made out of gold and silver and copper and nickel, and they were made in the United States from the U.S. Mint, and they're very historic. So for me, I like parts of history. And they were one of the... Every time a coin changes a type of design, it's because of some history thing that happened in the United States. Okay, Van. So you have an interesting display here. Let's look at some of the, the things you brought uh, to the San Francisco Hard Asset Show. That's some interesting pieces you have. Well, you had pointed this out. Right. This was made in 1915. It's a $50 gold piece. It's the largest U.S. gold coin made in the United States. Okay. 1915, they had the Panama Pacific Exposition in San Francisco. They made a little over 600 of these. So it's the largest two and a half ounces worth of gold. Okay. And it's is that pure gold? Is that no? It's mixed with other metals so okay. that it doesn't get marked up and stuff. But it's a very, very rare coin because to stay in high grades and be a soft metal in this large, they got damaged pretty easily. So what would the value of this coin be then? This would be about one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars U.S. One hundred and fifteen thousand yes. U.S. Okay. What else? Uh, what else can we look at? This is another fifty dollar gold piece. When they had the gold rush in Yerba Buena, which is now San Francisco. Right. They started, the U.S. Mint couldn't make enough gold coins fast enough, so they hired some private asset, or minting companies to make gold coins. So this is one called Humbert. They had the U.S. Assay Office. They had Was Molitor. And a lot of these guys were old watchmakers. As you can see, there's a... Yeah, that's beautiful. Like the back of a watch on them and stuff. So the old $50 gold pieces, these are true gold rush coins. This is dated 1851. 1851, so a true gold rush coin. How much would something like this go for, Van? This is just shy of 50,000. What other goodies did you bring? This is a $4 gold piece, made in 1879. You know, very rare coin. This is 225,000, grades proof 65. It was sort of a pattern coin, which means an experimental coin. And this is a flowing hair. They also made a coiled hair, but it's very rare. Now, are these things for sale? Actually, those are all sold. I didn't sell them here, but okay. I sold them prior to coming here. I just didn't have any inventory to bring to display, so I brought some stuff out of my safe that belonged to clients. But most of the time, I have this type of stuff for sale all the time. Well, I see you also brought some paper currency, not just gold. What's, uh, what's, what's this over here? These are all different pieces of currency. 1896, they made what's called the Educational Series. They made a $1, $2, and a $5. It's just, you know, as you can see, the engraving and everything is... A spectacular and this is a really good example this is an ms67 premium quality paper you know it's pretty tough okay and how many are uh, of these exist you know i don't have any idea okay i mean this is a twenty-two thousand dollar note so wow. i don't know i'm guessing it's just a handful where do you safeguard all these things van not that you would tell me but no no i have uh, in my office at pcgs the coin grading company we have a walk-in vault and that's where we store everything is Through it open to the public no. and visitors no you could almost open a museum van with all the memorabilia you have. No, it kind of comes and goes. There's a lot of stuff that comes and goes in and out of our office. So you mentioned uh, PCGS is obviously uh, you know world famous uh, coin grading company. How uh, when you're grading a coin, what makes one coin better than over another coin? Well, rare coins are graded based on how well struck they are. In other words, when they go into the die, if the metal's the right temperature and the die's the right temperature, the metal's the right temperature, that the gold or the silver would get up into the die and become fully struck. Also, the amount of marks, how banged up the coin is, the luster on the coin, if it's bright and lustrous, and, or, and also the overall eye appeal. So there's really four technical things for grading a coin. So, Van, what's the market like? Is there a room to make money here? For investors? Yeah, I think it's one of the most underpriced assets out there because gold's gone up six or seven times. The rare coin markets over the same period of time has probably gone up 100%, not 700% or 600%. Fantastic. Well, I definitely learned a lot today, Van. Thank you, Van, thank you so much for taking the time to explain it. Okay, thank you. And nice I'll, just, I'll just take a parting gift if you don't mind. Anyone you want, <laughs> just no problem. And thanks for watching this segment on Kiko News. You can email me any comments or questions at newsfeedback at kiko.com or better yet, tweet me at Daniela Cambone. Thanks for watching.